Hello everyone and welcome to lecture number 18. My name is Arash Salim. I'm working with Professor Anand Agarwal at the Ohio State University. First of all, I'd, I'd like to thank ONR for founding uh, this lecture series on silicon and wideband gap power devices. In the last lecture, I explained how can we process <coughs> the JBS diodes, how can we fabricate the, these JBS diodes, and uh, I told that we need six masks for this fabrication. In this lecture, I'm talking about the design of these six masks. So in the outline, we have the mask layout design, on state consideration, and then finally, we have the off state consideration based on these mask layout designs. Here is a cross-sectional view of 1.7 kilovolt for a silicon carbide JVS diodes. Uh, we talked about this uh, cross-sectional view in the physics of uh, the JVS, in the simulation, and also in the fabrication part. Again, <coughs> I can say that we need P plus regions with a width of 2 micrometer and a distance of 2.5 micrometer, the active area and then two micrometer with a distance of 0.8 micrometer for the guard rings, and with 50, uh, 50 uh, micrometer distance, we have the M plus in, uh, region for channel stop with a width of five micrometer. This slide shows a cross-sectional view along with the top view of all masks in two millimeter square JBS diodes, including 46 guard rings over here in the periphery of the device. And then we have the M plus region for the channel stop after 50 micrometer distance between the last guard ring. So we need six masks with alignment mark, P plus, M plus, via over layer metal and the polyamide in order to fabricate these devices as discussed in the previous lecture. Here is the mask of P plus in order to form the P plus, uh, P plus regions in the active area and the guard rings. For the active area, here we have fingers which are in parallel together with a width of two micrometer and a distance of two and a half micrometer. And then we have the guard rings over here with the width of two micrometer and distance of 0.8 micrometer. But one thing that is so important here is you should note that we need a rounded corners for all power devices in order to reduce the electric field crowding. Otherwise it costs to decrease the breakdown voltage. So by rounding the corners here, as you can see, we can have stable breakdown voltage. Now, this is the case that we mentioned in the previous lectures that we need a wider P plus region for the last P plus in the active area for rounding these corners. Another thing that I did is I also did the rounding of these fingers as well. It doesn't matter which uh, geometry or cell geometries you're actually designing, fingers, uh, squares, hexagons. Uh, you need to round the corners as well. So in order to have a rounding corners for these fingers, I put an extra area here at these corners, one, two, three, and four. And then you can see here we have a proper rounding for the fingers as well. The next, next, uh, next mask is M plus masks. So here you can see the P plus regions, active area, termination, the guard rings, and then finally we have the M plus region here. And again, you can see this rounding as well. Next mask is via mask in order to etch the silicon dioxide and silicon nitride and uh, reach to the surface of silicon carbide and then deposition of titanium and so on. Uh, so <coughs> for this mask, we need an overlayer over here, four micrometer, 
as you can see over here, th this is actually four micrometer, but it's not very clear in this cartoon. So we have an overlap of four micrometer here and four micrometer over that via in order to be sure that this titanium can deposit on all part of the fingers. So this overlayer uh, it distance is so important for all designs of the power devices. So be careful of these overlayers every, uh, every time that you're designing a mask. Then mass number five is overlayer metallization. As we discussed, we are sputtering the aluminum. And then uh, by a proper uh, mask, we are etching the, this area and this area, I mean the periphery of the device, in order to have the overlayer metallization only on the active area. And for this case, the overlap that I choose is uh, from the last guard ring, uh, last uh, P plus to the half of the second guard ring, as you can see here. And obviously, we have the rounding corners for all these uh, structures. And finally, la uh, the last one, mask number six, is polyamide. Polymide is acting as a dielectric uh, uh, for the packaging. So we are coating the sample with polymide, seven micrometer, and then we need a proper mask in order to etch the middle part to reach the overlayer metal over here. So we need a rectangle at the center of the active area with a rounding corner again, and then here is the all masks that we need for fabricating these devices. Now I'm going to talk about different cell geometries and the effect of these uh, different cell geometries on the on state and off state characteristics. The first finger that I'm explaining here is the finger cell geometry. As you can see, we have the fingers in parallel with a width of two micrometer and a distance of two and a half micrometer, as we simulated before. The next geometry is a square cells. So we can change the fingers to the square cells with the same uh, distances. So here, again, we have a width of two micrometer for the squares that we need for the P plus regions and a distance of two and a half micrometer between them for any part of the device, even at the corners here. So all of them are two and a half micrometer. I just changed it or replaced the squares with the circles and the, you can see these circles have a diameter of two micrometers and again distance uh, the, with the distances of two and a half micrometer for all part of the device. And again, be careful about the distance between the last cell and the corner. Here we have two and a half micrometer. Now you can replace the all cells, uh, squares or circles with hexagons. So I named it hexagon cell geometry type one and then I have hexagon cell geometry, but type two, the type one, the hexagon cells are in the order of squares. But in type two, <coughs> we have the honey structure, as you can see here. And again, the width of these cells is two micrometer in any direction with a distance of two and a half micrometer between them. Two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, and two and a half micrometer. So now we can consider the honest state characteristics which device or which cell geometry results in the highest uh, 
current density. As we discussed before, the current path area includes only the shot key diodes and not the P plus regions or PN junction diodes for the case of JBS. For the MPS, there is another uh, actually phenomena, but for the JBS, only this part, the shot key diodes, contribute for the current. So if we have, a, for example, 50 micrometer by 50 micrometer area with a total area of 2,500 micrometers, this purple area from the top side, there is no current inside the, uh, actually uh, underneath of this P plus here. And the current pass area is only the red part. Now let's compare different cell geometries and see which cell geometry results in the highest current density. So here again, the suppose that we have a total area of 2,500 micrometers. And then we can calculate the area of these cells, the P plus cells, <coughs> and find the area of the red part or the total current path area. If you do it for finger cell geometry, <coughs> you can see that the total current path area for the finger cell geometry is 1400 micrometer square, which is 56% of the total area. And by calculation with uh, for other cell geometries, this percentage is increased and reached to 80, 81, 83, and 85 for hexagon type 1 and square, type 2 hexagon, and circle, respectively. So if you compare these percentages, you will conclude that the circle cell geometry has the highest current density because the total current path area of the circles is the highest among the different cell geometries. But the honest state is not the only consideration that we should do. We should also consider the off state. In the off state consideration, as we talked about it before, the P plus regions here inside the active area actually providing a proper overlap and shielding in order to decrease the electric field at the JBS diodes. If you remember from the previous lectures, if the electric field is increased, then the barrier height is lowered and caused to increase the leakage current. So we need this P plus shielding at the middle of the JB, uh, at the middle of the Schottky diodes. And we simulated and found that two and a half micrometer distance is an optimum distance for this purpose. Now, suppose that one finger can shield 1.25 micrometer, half of the 2.5 micrometer from the right hand side, and another P plus can shield the rest of the half of 2.5 micrometer, which is 1.25 micrometer. And then we have an Proper overlapping, uh, a proper overlapping and shielding. So there is no gap between these shieldings and we have a low electric field in the case of fingers. But if we consider the other cell geometries, for example, the squares and circles, you can see there is a large gap at the middle. Although this, for example, a square can shield 1.25 micrometer in the periphery of the cell, but this shielding is not enough, and we have this gap. And this gap means that we have high electric field at the middle of these cells, which results in higher leakage current due to high barrier lowering. Also, for the hexagon cell geometries type 1 and type two, 2, you can see there is a gap. And if you compare hexagon type 2, type 1 squares and circles, 
after finger, single, uh, finger cell geometries, we can see that hexagon type 2 has a better overlapping. So in order to solve this problem and have a proper shielding at the middle, we can put some extra cells at the middle. For example, at this case of a square cell geometry, we have two by two micrometer squares. And then we need at least one by one micrometer squares, extra cells, in order to have a proper shielding at the middle. In the case of circles, the main cells have a diameter of two micrometers. <coughs> But if we put extra cells with a diameter of one micrometer and look at through this part carefully, we can see we still have some gaps. So one micrometer diameter is not enough and we have to increase the diameter. Here we can see that at least we need 1.8 micrometer as a diameter for extra cells in order to have a proper shielding. Otherwise, the shielding is not uh, enough and cause to increase the electric field and the leakage current. In the case of hexagon one, again, if we put extra cells with the width of one micrometer at the center or the, mi the middle between the main cells, we still see some gaps over here, as you can see here, and also here. So there is not enough overlapping, and we have to increase the width of these cells and reach to 1.2 micrometers in order to have a proper overlapping and shielding. And finally, for JBS hexagon 2, with the honey structure, we need only a width of 0.5 micrometers for have a good shielding at the middle of the main cells. So now, let's consider and compare the on state and off states for these JBS dials. In the on state, we saw that we need the highest total current path area, the red part, in order to have the highest current density. But we also saw that sometimes in some cell geometries, we don't have a proper shielding at the middle. And we put extra cells, as you can see here, the main cells with extra cells. Now let's compare these all cell geometries with and without extra cells. We saw that the finger cells are okay and we don't have any, uh, we don't need any extra cells in order to have a proper P plus shielding. So 56% is the total, 56% uh, of the total area, we have the current path. But in the case of hexagon type 1, although the percentage is 80%, but we didn't have good proper shielding, and we had to increase it to the cells 1, and then we saw that width of 1 micrometer is not enough, we increased it and reached to the extra cells 2 to have a P plus, uh, proper P plus shielding, but you see that we are decreasing the percentage of the total area from 80% to 77%. In the similar, uh, similar way, we can see that the square is not okay and we have to put the extra cells to reach 76%. And then for type two of hexagon, we have 78% and for the circles, we have only 72% of the total area for the total current path. And again, I just assume that the total area is 
2500 micrometer squares in order to calculate the total current path areas over here. So now we have 56% for fingers, 77% for hexagon type 1, 76% for squares, 78% for hexagon type 2, and 72% for circles. And if you compare these results, you can see the hexagon type 2 has the highest percentage of the total area for current path. In other words, we can uh, say that among different consider cell geometries with the proposed dimensions based on the simulation results, two micrometer widths of the emitter cells and the distance two and a half micrometer between them, the JBS hexagon two or honey structure with extra cells only 0.5 micrometer width at the middle of them has the highest current density on a state with a proper pupil loss shielding of a state. So when you are designing a mask for any power device, you need to consider the both <coughs> uh, on a state and off a state. Otherwise, you know, for example, suppose that you're just thinking about the honest states and you, s you may conclude that the circles has the best result. But we saw that the circle is not a good design if we don't have any extra cells. Thank you very much for your attention.